In this video, I'm going to show you how to locate a mine and possibly find anti-handling devices that are connected to the mine using the two-finger sweep method. This is the method that is taught at Engineer Advanced Individual Training. In this method, you use two fingers on each hand and you slowly work your way across uncovering the area where you have an indicator of a possible mine. Now in the scenario we're going to be working off of today a sweep team has gone out with a mine detector they had an indicator for a possible mine they put down the marker and they're calling up the uh, prober to check the area, the area. The prober comes up, uses a mine probe to check the area where the indication was to see if he can more precisely locate where the mine might be. Once he has done that, he then gets down into the prone and begins the two finger sweep to uncover the possible mine identify the type of mine and also determine if there are any anti-handling devices connected to the mine. Now if you do find anti-handling devices or possibly detonation cord run from the mine to an unknown location you need to check that out. You need to make sure that there isn't more there than what you thought. It's not uncommon for anti-tank mines especially to be double, triple, or quadruple stacked. Meaning you have two, three, or four anti-tank mines laid in the exact location. One right on top of the other. The top one will be fused and armed. And the ones underneath typically will be fused but not armed. It's also likely, because I have come across this in uh, demining operations that were done in Angola, the landmines could be daisy chained to other ordnance. Possibly an art unexploded artillery shell or an unexploded aircraft drop bomb or iron bomb. Uh, I've seen footage of deminers clearing roads. They found an anti-tank mine in the middle of the road. They found detonation cord coming off the side of the anti-tank mine. They followed the detonation cord to a 500 pound iron bomb that was hidden right alongside the road inside the bushes that the deminers didn't even notice. So you need to be extremely careful and extremely observant when you're doing this task. Now, I do not recommend you do this unless you are trained in landmine warfare and explosive ordnance handling. What I'm going to show you will is the method you use for either recovering mines from a minefield or you're clearing them from a roadway or an area for humanitarian purposes or to allow passage of traffic. Now the team that goes in needs to be stripped down in their gear, no metal on their body, no weapons, no magazines in their mag pouches, no canteen cups in the carriers. Um, it's also recommended you don't even wear a watch because there's a possibility that the mine could be magnetically influenced and it could react to the metal inside the watch. There's been a lot of debate over, on that over the years. Uh, primarily involving the Russian TM-62 Mike anti-tank mine. But now I'll go in and uh, show you how to perform the two finger sweep. When you do this, you should not wear gloves because you need the maximum 
abilities of your senses, especially tactile feel. I am wearing gloves for OPSEC reasons. This is the area that we had the indication of a possible mine. So you come in, go down into the prone, and then start your sweeps. We found the edge of a possible landmine. Inch our way forward. And we uncover the outer edge. We identify the edges of a possible mine. Now we need to locate possible pressure plate or pressure prongs depending on the type of mine. With an anti-tank mine it's typically going to be pressure plate. With anti-personnel it could be a pressure plate. You could have pressure prongs. In the case of a bounding fragmentation mine like the Russian OZM series or the American M16 series. Now we go through, locate pressure plate, do this as gently as possible because you do not know if the mine has been altered, making it more sensitive. Okay, we have an identification of an anti-tank mine. It is armed. Uh, we can identify this particular one as a US made M19 low metallic anti-tank mine. Now we need to check for possible anti-handling devices. So we'll continue to work around the edges using the two finger sweep. You're feeling for possible anti-handling devices, maybe trip wires connected to the mine. You may be checking for detonating cord running from a secondary fuse well, which could be an indicator that it is daisy chained to either other mines or some other type of ordnance. When you do this, put one hand on top of the mine not over the pressure plate to help stabilize the mine as you're going. Okay, we found nothing coming off of the sides of the mine. We did locate secondary fuse well at this location. There is nothing attached to that fuse well. Now we need to check underneath the mine. You're going to try feeling as far as you can underneath. Uh, the fuse wells underneath the mine are typically within two to four inches from the outer edge of the mine. From what I have seen from pictures on foreign stuff and from handling 
U.S. made lines. If you find a void underneath the mine, that is a good indicator that there could be an anti-handling device connected to the mine or some type of booby trap connected to the mine or located underneath the mine. Now when you check the side, throw back in some of the dirt and then check the next side. We do have a void underneath the mine. And that is an indicator of a possible anti-handling device or booby trap located underneath the mine. Nothing on that side. Then we go through and we repeat the same procedure on this side of the mine. Now after we go through, if we find an anti-handling device, typically you will detonate the mine in place because it is too dangerous to disarm and remove. If no anti-handling device is found, you can move the mine to another location for disposal or for reuse. I'm not going to go into those procedures in this video, that's for another video. This is a basic engineer task. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movement, always remember, essay ons.